All right, hello, Minecraft Infotech fans. I got a video I've actually tried to make several times here now. I had to reinstall Windows, got my microphone, had to fix the microphone levels because apparently it had dropped everything really low. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, I'll speak up a bit here. All right, we're going to do a big one today. Nuclear power, like really good nuclear power, not the crappy half 50% EU version. Right, so I'm going to cover this giant reactor. I'm going to cover the large heat exchanger. They just go naturally together. I'm going to cover the Inconel pipes. And I'm going to cover some automation. A little bit of fun here as well. So, let's get started with the reactor. So this thing here, you're probably familiar with the, small, with the reactor itself. Maybe you've seen one of my other videos. I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up and you can see inside there's some you don't have to put this fluid in here it just appears once you've loaded it up with fluid um, you'll see there's reactor chambers now that in EU mode you'd be throttled by 50 percent <laughs> and there's your basic uh, components in here uh, I, basically the reactor is actually itself is in the middle and then you've got the reactor chambers around it you're going to need all six fluid reactors must have all six and then you build this reactor pressure vessel around it just look up, look that up in NEI. It's pretty simple. You are going to need, aside from that, a reactor access hatch, which lets you get inside. Since the thing's encased inside, you have to use this to get inside to work on it. And you'll see, once you've completed the vessel, it'll turn into this funny colored thing, and it'll show the coolant levels and HUS, etc. And if you hover over this, it'll say, nuclear reactor in fluid cooling mode, output by 100%. And I'm telling you right now, it's the big leap over just producing straight ACU out of this. It's a big leap. So you're gonna need some you're gonna need that. You're gonna need a redstone reactor port and that'll turn the red thing on. And I've got some red cable here from Project Red. You can read a little up on that online. I'll cover it in a little bit here. Uh, but you're gonna need that. That turns it on and off. And then you're going to need two of these fluid reactor fluid ports. Everything else Outside is a reactor pressure vessel, 5x5x5. Five by five by five. So it's, it's going to be basically be a big ass cube of this, minus a few pieces to, to fit in the four parts you're going to, other parts you're going to need. And there's a reactor fluid port. Um, you're going to need to generate this stuff here, the IC2 coolant. Um, you're going to need lapis dust. Uh, you can use whatever the water, but it takes eight per. Distilled water, one to one. Use the distilled water. You'll probably have plenty from messing with your other, with your uh, turbines. Up until now, you'll probably be coal powering them for a while. You'll have tons of distilled water. Now's a, now's a good place to use it. <laughs> I keep this here in case I ever need to top up the coolant for any reason. Uh, I want now this is taking a return coolant in from the, the hot coolant comes out. You're going to need an ejector upgrade. And it needs to be put in there, and that forces the hot coolant out, and we'll go into this large heat exchanger. And then the heat exchanger at the top, the cold coolant comes back in. This is a closed cycle. It should never drop the amount. You're not ever going to lose coolant during the process under normal circumstances. Um, however, I have seen when you're running this as a server versus running it in single player mode, I have seen that um, sometimes these pipes will occasionally lose a little bit of fluid or something, and I don't know what causes it. It seems to happen when you go exploring and you go out of range of your base and it goes in inactive because you're not close enough to it. The chunk gets unloaded. Sometimes a little bit of stuff disappears, and if that happens and you start getting low on coolant, I don't know what happens when this hits zero, but it's probably nothing good. Um, so you will need one way to top it up if you need to. And this is just keep this ticking over, and you can top it up in a hurry if you need to. There's enough in there to keep it from blowing itself to pieces. Um, anyway, so the next thing I'm going to go over is so we got the output here, the hot coolant goes down. Now we're going to get to the large heat exchanger. The large heat exchanger is pretty. Uh, I'm not going to co you know, I'm not going to cover um, what's going on inside here. That is up to you to figure out how to do that. There's plenty of plans online. I kind of snagged one from somebody and I use that and the beauty of this is it's repeatable. This one will produce 384 EHU over S. Oh yes, if you're wondering how much coolant does an HU heat 
1. 1 MB of coolant for, eight, for each heat unit. So this will do 384 at a time. i got more than enough coolant in this buffer to handle that. <laughs> okay, so large heat exchanger. Uh, it's got two inputs, two outputs. Uh, first inputs on the, bo uh, the uh, on the bottom. Hot stuff goes in there. Could be lava, could be coolant. We'll get to that in a moment. Um, other than that, pretty simple. There is a circuit input. I will get to that near the end of the video. Uh, I'm going to give you the basics so you can at least set it up and start generating power. And then you can stop there if you want and then come back and watch the rest later. Uh, but uh, anyway, let's get to the top here. The top is the co cold coolant output. So, so imagine the coolant is coming in, flowing up through here, boiling the water inside to make steam, and then coming back up here, it's cold, and now it gets recycled back in there. Make sure you got a bit of a buffer here. Um, word of warning, if you were to go down and stick lava in this right now, uh, you get Pahoe Hoey lava as an output. That would overwrite this. I'll go into lava later. Um, Again, I want to just get through the rest of this, but just a word of warning. Um, if you're thinking, oh, wow, this is cool. Hey, I'm going to put some lava and see what I get. Well, you're going to overwrite your bunch of your coolant here, and this stuff's not, I mean, it's, it's not super expensive to make, but it's not super cheap either. Um, you just don't want to waste it. So, <clears throat> what else does this thing do? Well, let's see. It's going to be outputting steam, therefore it needs input. Distilled water only. It cannot run on anything but distilled water. If you put regular water in here or anything else, it will blow itself to smithereens and take a good chunk of your base with it. Just don't do it. Plastic pipe is fine. It's, it's going to be cold water, so you're not going to have a problem. You'll see here I'm actually outputting the turbine here. I'm, I'm outputting its water here. I've got a quantum tank to buffer it, and I'm outputting its water back into there. So this thing's going to produce distilled water as it runs. Steam goes through, distilled water comes out. It's a perfect thing. You can just remember the, the, the fluid here, how we're just got a nice closed cycle. And I will say, this is not a completely closed cycle here. There is a minor, minor, minor bit of loss on distilled water over time. It's so minor that I don't think I could, I could live the rest of my life playing this game 24-7 and probably never run this out. And if not, and if it does get a little bit low, I got two more barrels here to top it up. And I can always run a little bit of coal through here and just produce normal steam with that water. And then, you know, it, look, this isn't a problem. So, uh, your steam's coming out here. Now, these things can be very thirsty, which means they're going to need a ton of steam coming out. And um, now that we have Greg Tech GT++, it's added some really nice pipes for us. In Canel. I can spell it. Now there's several versions. You do not want 792. You do not want 625. It must be 690. GT++ additive. Uh, you can make it in the mixer. You don't need the alloy smelter. Or you don't need the giant alloy smelter for this. Thank goodness. Because this, is, this stuff is actually pretty freaking awesome. Um, the small Inconel pipe will take 60,000 liters per second. Uh, this thing here eats 24,000 liters per second of steam. Uh, with the setup in here, I couldn't get it even. I couldn't make just 24,000, not without mixing uh, uranium and thorium, which is a kind of a pain because the uranium will eat up faster than the thorium. Uh, but anyway, what will happen is... The amount of this setup right here will produce 30,000 liters per second of steam out of this guy. And it's significant. Each, each heat unit produces for you 80 liters of steam. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it adds up fast. So it does... Uh, You'll be producing tons of steam, 30,000 liters per second. This is more than double. I could have used the small pipe and gotten away with it, but... I decided I wanted to use the larger one to give me some headspace. Who knows in the future I might be, I might put a better thing in there that needs that eats closer to thirty thousand, or maybe it'll even eat more and I'll have to upgrade my reactor. It's all doable. Uh, the Uncanel's not too expensive to make. It's once you put this stuff together, you're going to need niobium. Uh, you're going to need niobium and molybdenum. 
which are maybe a little harder to get. Chrome, well, we all know what a pain in the butt Chrome is, but once you get the once you get the advanced miner, Chrome's a snap. You just advance mine a, uh, a fairly untouched redstone area, and you're going to be swimming in Chrome. I got hundreds of Chrome out of that, I, I, and I haven't even eaten the whole thing up. So it's now molybdenum, niobium you can get from pyrolusite. Um, Spasartine, well, I'm sorry, it's, it's in that area, it's, it's in the manganese. You can get niobium from that, I think as a side product from washing or, or thermal centrifuging, <laughs> or in some cases grinding. So you'll want to look at your NEI and try to optimize your niobium output maybe for a little of that. Now the other option is the um, uh, appetite and, um, there's appetite and what else? Um, uh, and the phosphate. There's this stuff in there called uh, pyro something or other, pyrochlor or something like that, and it has niobium in it. That's another source of it. So, and it's actually fairly easy stuff to find. You'll run into tons of it while exploring, so you won't have any problems with that. Um, molybdenum, on the other hand, uh, there's an extremely rare type of vein that has molybdenum. It has wolfenite and some other stuff. If you find that, do a backflip because you just found some really rare stuff. Um, I think it's even more rare than diamond. It's very difficult to find this crap. Um, I have yet to find one in this game. I did find one in my last game, but it was only fairly late into it. Um, and that was with the old Infotech. The new one, I don't think the rarity's changed any. I just know that's such stupid rare. But you can also get it if you find tungsten. If you find tungsten, again, you can kind of optimize your... Um, output to get yourself a little bit of molybdenum uh, as a side product and so you can get it that way so anyway like I said the steam comes up goes into here um, if you're gonna hook two things up to the steam thing make sure you use a shutter to prevent backflow because otherwise it makes your thing run efficiently the steam will come here once it drops here it's got to go in and that'll prevent any air bubbles from causing any any um, sputter on your uh, on your turbine here so uh, all that is pretty simple. Um, now let's go into a very quick bit of uh, automation. It's a decently simple thing to do. So I've got a, uh, I've got the uh, stream voltage battery buffer here, and I put a cover on it, an energy detection cover, and you screwdriver that guy until it says electric inverted. You want electric inverted. So it'll send out a redstone signal based on what your uh, electricity usage is. So it's going to go through this red, you need the framed alloy wire to, in order to stage this thing up and use it like a pipe. It's kind of annoying, but yeah, this stuff, just look this up on NEI, it's not hard to make. You can run that down, and it'll run your signal all the way to the, all the, way to the ground here. All the way, or I'm sorry, all the way to the reactor here. Yeah. All the way wherever the hell you need it. And all it has to do is sit next to it. It's not going to appear to be connected to this, but all you need is a redstone signal, and this thing will detect it. Uh, this Illuminar, I, just for fun, I put a button on. I, put a, I wanted a yellow fallout light to turn on when this reactor is active. Sometimes the, the ticking sound fails for some reason, and so it's nice to know when the thing's running. Although I could tell if this thing's green, you know, then, then I'll know for a fact that this thing's running as well, because this thing isn't going to turn green until this thing starts outputting crap. Um... Anyway, um, I, I actually found that this, this guy next to this thing doesn't work. It doesn't connect to it. But I put, if I put a dab of redstone on the ground here, it'll come over and turn the light on. Let's, let's get it running here. So I'm going to go over here. I just made some hydrogen. I, I set up a small generic hydrogen plant over here. And so I'm going to uh, get a job running where I'm going to make... Let's see, I need you to get rid of this oxygen. I try to keep these no-nonsense, but unfortunately there's going to be a little bit of shenanigans here as I prepare the chemical reactor. I'm going to go ahead and grab eight nitrogen. Pump it in there. I'm set up for ammonia production right now, if you're wondering what this is. But this this will this will ease up enough power to uh, actually turn the guy loose here down there the ammonia is pretty 
significant. Um, oh, one thing, I'm gonna, before I even kick this guy off, I'm going to show you something here. When I first kick that in, nothing's going to happen. When this thing's charging, uh, first it charges the batteries, then it charges the buffer last. There's a buffer in this thing. You can see it on the thing if you go to the battery buffers. You can hover over it and it'll show you how much it says capacity. And that's what you want to look at. Um, so for this guy here, it's extreme voltage, 16 slot, 2 million. So 2 million EU is in that buffer. But that thing fills last, but it empties first. Now, the redstone signal coming out of this thing... Um, I think there is a slight degradation in there, because if I put some redstone here, I actually do see that there is a little bit of signal in this wire. I think it dies out by the time it gets down there, but that's actually kind of a good thing, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Um, so anyway, what will happen is the this thing will fill, the buffer will fill, then the redstone signal drops off completely. Now, when the buffer gets used up, this the signal over here doesn't get strong enough to turn that reactor on until the buffer is empty. Or maybe nearly empty. Um, but anyway, it does seem like there is a little bit of headspace there. So that if you're running a small job, like I just want to grind some ore. It's not eating a whole lot of EU. Because it's actually fairly small. So it'll actually be a while before that turns on. That way that thing isn't kicking on if I'm just running two pieces of ore through. That I just spare ore I needed to grind up real fast. I'm not wasting energy. So I'm not, you know, I'm not wasting power, you know spinning that thing up because there is a spin up on the heat thing i should have asked to mention that earlier there is some spin up on that um there is a delay before it kicks out at full power so let's go ahead and punch this guy in let's run down there and see it all turn on Come on, get in there. so what's going to happen here is any moment now this thing's going to kick itself on when the power gets low enough, this thing here does not produce. This thing here goes almost instantaneously to producing what it needs. It's got a very short spin up. Hey, look at that, it's on. And now you can see it turn on. Now this thing's now running, but this thing is not producing that much steam at first. In fact, there's nothing coming out yet. Give it a moment. There it goes. I just don't think we're seeing anything here, but it's gonna it's gonna make this thing sputter at first. It's not going to get enough steam, but it will ramp up to full steam power eventually. It's just going to take a few moments to do that. You can see it's not really eating the water that fast yet, but it will. It most certainly will. Let's get in here and have a look. You can see there's my 384. But this thing's got to spool up. There, we're starting to see it now. It takes about half, 30 seconds or so for this thing to spool up, and then we'll start producing power. Um, but anyway... Um, I've got this buffer here, and I've got it here for a good reason. Um, I'm this thing eats 24,000. I'm producing 30,000. That means it's not going to. It's going to once it gets to full power, this is going to start backing up in this pipe. But this pipe's big, so that I can back up a little bit in there. What'll happen is, um, when this thing shuts down, when it seems like it's got enough power, that steam's going to continue to get produced. And even if, if it backed up into here and got buffered, all that steam might go to waste. I think there's a little bit of, I think the thing shuts off a tiny bit early, so I'm probably not wasting too much. There might be ways to make sure you never waste any at all. I don't think the waste amount's enough to justify not automating this. I'd rather just have this guy automated, you know, let him tick down, when should this will run out. I'll know when it runs out when that thing starts, uh, when I turn that, when I, uh, start running jobs and stuff and I don't see anything ticking away. Uh, but that's, that's, that's what you're going to get here. with automation. So I, I, it's worth automating. Any tiny bit of inefficiency or waste during it is just much better than having to run down here and manually throw the switch whenever I get low on power up there. And then I forget to turn it off and oh gosh, I've just wasted tons of power. This thing's now got, you know, areas because it's been running for a while. This thing's getting all burned up and used up because it's, you know, I forgot to turn it off and it burned through a whole pile of nuclear fuel. No worries. This thing will only come on when it really needs to start charging the thing up. So, I do 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 you do want to have a nice long run, I guess, so that you don't have those problems. And you can put a nice, uh, handy little light here, and if you just want to see the cool effect of the uh, that thing, I couldn't put that on the side, so I just stuck it here. Good enough. So there, now you see I'm getting full power out of it. 
So that's that. Um, now there's a high pressure steam as well, and you're probably wondering how do I make that with this thing? I think you can see it all shut itself off. And you'll see the turbine spins for just a little bit here. Oh, it, see there wasn't that much extra in there. So I didn't really waste a lot. Like I said, you do waste a little bit of nuclear fuel while it's trying to spool up until it hits enough steam to run this thing, but it's just part of the system. But the amount of power this thing produces is pretty gargantuan. So, at least for my current tech level. I'm about to get into much better stuff, but this is this is good, and I can I can bump this up. I can I could repeat this. I could repeat this pattern, basic pattern here. Six times in this thing, or the two of these together three times, which will triple my use of fuel, but it will also allow me to make a lot more stuff. Um, so the high pressure steam. So there's a threshold on this machine. Uh, the maximum it can take is 8,000 liters of coolant. I don't know if there's a maximum on the lava. Uh, if it's 8,000 or if it's 2,000. But basically there's a threshold where you have to feed it a minimum amount of stuff before it switches over from producing just normal steam to high pressure steam. And for, so the basic output, uh, the basic minimum for, for coolant is 4,000. So I would need to make a reactor that's putting out 4,000 HU over S to get that to work, to get to get superheated steam instead of regular steam. Uh, there is a way to lower that threshold, but I'll get into that in a moment. Lava, you can put the lava in. You only need to put one bucket at a time. It's 1,000 uh, liters, which is one bucket at a time. And given that you can easily feed it that much at a time, lava will almost certainly give you superheated steam no matter what. The Bahoe Hoey that comes out. Uh, again, as a warning, it'll overwrite anything in this hatch when it comes out. And the coolant will do the same to the Bahoe Hoey if you switch back and forth between the two. I would suggest building separate ones for that. But anyway, I don't know what that clicker is. Alright, anyway, um, the Bahoe Hoey, you can centrifuge that and get metals out of it. So I can put it in the centrifuge. It doesn't have to be the large one. The regular one will do the same thing. You can get copper, tin, gold, tantalum, and tungstate. So it can be an alternative source of tungsten and tantalum if you need those. Um, chances are, though, you've probably already found better sources of these. Um, you can also use this stuff as a fuel. There is a geothermal generator that will take lava or a hoey hoey. And produce yourself 2048 EV at 72% efficiency. It's not great, but it'll do it. Um, I don't know how fast it eats that stuff up. I've never built the thing. You need access to the um, toxic Everglades so you can build the giant smelter so that you can then mash this guy together. It's a very expensive machine. In fact, you need wetware processors and stuff. It's out of it's out of reach. It's out of reach at your current technology level. Let's just leave it at that. You can get crystal processor technology, but you're dealing with ludicrous voltage at that point. It's kind of out of your reach. But it, it is an alternative if you want to save that stuff up for in the future when you have a machine that can do that. Hey, go for it. Um, if you're using coolant, uh, 4,000 is what you're going to need. Uh, you can put a chip in there and read the book. It does tell you the calculation. You can make a spreadsheet to, to figure this out. It's pretty simple. I have a, another video I'm, I'm going to make with the spreadsheet after this, and I'll post it up too, so you can take a quick look at that. It's, it'll explain all of it. But basically, when you put the chip in there, uh, if you put a chip 24 in there, you can lower it down to 550. Um, that seems to be the minimum amount needed, and then you're only going to be about 60% efficient at that point. This machine here cannot actually produce enough the way it's set up now. If I added one more block into this, I'd probably trip over the threshold. If I fill all this up, I get an 1152 HU over S, and there is a 1050, there's an 1158, um, uh, and there's a circuit setting that'll take 1150 is the minimum, and give you superheated steam at about 70%. And I'll probably do that when I decide it's time to move up to superheated steam. Superheated steam basically gives you double the eight, double the E, the uh, EU over T for that particular machine for the same turbine wheel. 
So this one here, I think, is producing around 600 or some EU over T. I'm producing 1,200 with high-powered pressure steam. And I would have as an output regular steam, which I could then feed into this guy and then produce even more power. So you can actually really double up on your energy that way. So I would be getting almost triple the uh, electricity out of that steam doing that. Um, it would take a hefty reactor to do that. I would lose some efficiency here. But it's doable. Um, I don't know if this thing would produce enough steam, though, to get me through. I, I'd have to, would have to see what came out. Losing 70%. Losing, I could lose it to a quarter, I think. I might have to build a slightly better reactor than even what I've got now. Material's going to get expensive. Or I have to worry about it blowing up if it gets too hot. And I'll have to rig up, rig up some kind of safety mechanism. And you can get all kinds of stupid stuff there. But hopefully this all that makes sense. And hopefully this will uh, give you guys a good idea of how this all works. Um, a big, long video. Hefty subject. You get to see it running. Um, it's worth building. Absolutely worth building. This thing has taken a lot of uh, trouble, out of my, trouble out of my hair right now. I'm not having to run tons of coal out anymore to run through this thing not have to chop the hell out of trees just to just to run this for a few minutes to you know bolster my my thing up there I just go up use my machines this thing kicks on as needed to top up the power if this runs out I've got a, a large amount of fuel uh, we're a bit in the fluff section now so we're gonna go up here I'll show you how much fuel you can get with a um, large ore miner or the ore process, the ore drilling plant. This is just what I've managed to centrifuge in, centrifuge out and, you know, produce and melt up from all this crap that I've produced. And this is, look at all the uranite and stuff I have left over. And the thorium and all that other stuff. It's just, it's pretty significant. More thorium than that, but no. So I've produced a ridiculous amount of stuff here. I haven't even gotten to the big reactors yet. I remember building that in my last game, and I remembered it really didn't seem to be worth the time. The steam output was abysmal. Although I may have built a crappy reactor. You might have to just build a really big, massive, stupid, big, expensive reactor to get decent amounts of steam out of it. But, uh, bah. the, uh, the, uh, IC reactor I built down in the basement there is a lot better. And you can see here, I've got I've got more than enough stuff to make fuel for a very long time, and then I can go get more if needed. I I've had, I've barely scratched. I've only run two or three tubs of lubricant, uh, barrels of lubricant through that uh through that 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 miner. I think it's still sitting down there, and there's just an absolute metric ton of uranium still down there. And I know of about I think three or four more uranium mines I haven't touched yet. Some of them are kind of far away, but you know. The amount of energy you get out of it is just gargantuan. And like I said, there's, there's, there's just a lot more stuff yet to process here. So anyway, that it'll, it'll, uh, it'll keep you, it'll keep you humming for a long time. Um, and then should I want to get some better process to run this blast furnace right now? It's C-team boosted and not really cutting the mustard too well, especially when I'm in dealing with tung things like tungsten. So eventually I want to get that moved up to using some kind of power unit. Unfortunately, um, you, there is a lot of expense in making such a system. I'd have to build um, a second reactor, a second state, a second large heat exchanger, and then another one of these. This would be the least expensive thing to build, would just be the stupid turbine. Uh, this is the second most expensive thing, and this is the most expensive thing that you have to build to make that work. And you can see it takes a lot of room up here. I, I have, you could crush this stuff together better, make better use of vertical space or something to get it running. But I, you know, I'm just going to uh, stick with it spaced out like it is. I have to use some extra pipes as a result, but it's just ended up being how it is. Could build another one of these and then just top it up with coal. Or I could use the nuclear generator over here to power that thing and go back to using colds to top up the smaller jobs I run up there, which might actually be a better way to go. Um, I would have to move this heat exchanger. I'm not moving this thing. This thing is this thing is where it's at. <laughs> this thing's never moving again. The heat exchanger could be moved. I have to re-maintenance it, but not a big deal. And I could take this stupid thing, move it somewhere else, and then put another turbine in. Or I could put another turbine here. 
Could have a heat exchanger sitting here, turbine over here. There's a lot of there's a lot of cool different ways you can do things. It'll produce enough power to uh, run the uh, furnace up there and cook my tungsten using nuclear power. I could also build a couple smaller non-pressurized reactors and just use this raw EU coming out of them to do it. I'd have to make a small bank of them to get it done, but anyway, that's reactors. Um, so um, I definitely recommend using the fluid reactor over the EU reactors. The, a small EU reactor, though, can be very nice when you just have something that you just want to, you know, you just want to let it grind, like you want to just have it pumping oil forever or something into a big quantum tank, hey, go for it. But if it's, uh, if it's a matter of, uh, powering some major, major, like, extreme voltage level crap, you're gonna need the high end. You're, you're gonna need to go for the big guns and build this guy here. And I recommend it, because the amount of energy that's come out of this has been hundreds, I've probably gotten hundreds of millions of EU raw out of this already. Way more than I would have got out if I had run just a regular reactor. There's no way I could come close to what I've what I've produced so far. Maybe not hundreds. Of, you're going to get uh, technically you should get a double the output, but I think you actually get a lot more when you're running through these turbines. Is you the better the more the better your turbine blade, the more efficient it is, the better you're going to do with this stuff. Um, like I said, you can produce very large amounts of steam with this. You know, even if I if I got if I was pushing 60,000 liters of steam through this, I'd be making some serious energy out of this thing. So, alright, that's all I've got. Uh, thank you for watching, and good luck uh, building up a nice setup. Like I said, feel free to look over this. If you have any improvements, make them. You can drop them in the comments too if you want. Uh, but anyway, good luck, and thank you for watching.